Hey everyone, we're back with another great webinar today. Uh, we have some great content ahead about uh, partnerships in general and how you can grow your business on a day-to-day -day basis through partnerships. Um, can we get some hellos in the chat just so I can know that you guys can hear me here? And maybe tell me where you're from and what company you're with. I see someone type in and we'll get it another minute to let people continue to file in. Hi, Kath. Nice to meet you. Bonnie, great to see you too. Awesome. Okay, so pretty clear you guys can hear. Uh, feel free to uh, chat in if you're having any audio issues with us. Uh, as we go ahead. So again, thank you all for joining today. We have a great uh, team here with you guys and I'll let them introduce themselves in a second. But just real quickly, I'm the moderator. I'm Wes from Workies. I run our strategic partnership program. And today we also have Nathan uh, from the Junk Trunk and Stephanie from Sequora Solutions. So I'm gonna go into the agenda and then I'll introduce them a little bit. So high level, I, we're going to get into like their story, how they partnered together, why they partnered together, and then we'll go through the process of building partnerships, retaining them and scaling them, and then how to maximize them for success. So at the end, we will also go into a short Q&A. So feel free to hold your questions till the end, or you can ask them during and we'll try to address them, but um, we're looking forward to the Q&A. So to kick off the content for today, uh, I, I kind of wanted to start just hearing the story of first the junk trunk from Nathan, and then we can go into Sakura Solutions from Stephanie. So Nathan, tell me a little bit about how the junk trunk started, who you you are, what it's about. Yeah, uh, started the junk trunk about seven years ago in Denver, Colorado, uh, f uh, finishing up school at CU Boulder and looking to make a little extra cash on the side started hauling junk with my dad's old ford ranger pickup truck and uh quickly saw what a need there was for a service like this um you know got in at a time where uh as i think a lot of you guys can attest to um you know seven eight years ago you know less competition than there is now uh, which you know is something that i think we've really benefited from and has helped us uh gain um you know notoriety um, in, in Denver, Colorado Springs, uh, and we also service Nashville, Tennessee as of uh, just a few months ago. So, um, you know, now we're a team of uh, about 30 individuals. We've got nine trucks, um, service, you know, really three major markets between Denver, Colorado Springs, and Nashville, Tennessee, and uh, getting into roll-off dumpsters uh, as well here in the next uh, 45 days or so. Um, so, you know, we're growing in junk removal and we're growing in, you know, a really similar industry of roll off dumpsters, as I think is kind of a natural progression, as I'm sure, you know, you guys are either in or thinking about entering. Um, but yeah, that's uh, a little bit about my background in junk removal and, and the start of uh, the junk trunk. Awesome. Thanks uh, for that, Nathan. And Stephanie, can you tell me a little bit about yourself? and what Sakura Solutions is all about. Yes, thank you first for, for having me. And um, Sakura Solutions is a Denver-based home organization company. And unlike Nathan, I didn't start as an entrepreneur. I actually was in um, the healthcare industry for about 15 years. And towards the end of my career in healthcare, I actually was organizing operating rooms, exam rooms, those kind of things for efficiency and quality. And then when I left healthcare, didn't, I kind of fell into entrepreneurship and that was about six years ago. And we are a luxury home organization business. We do concierge moves. We have a team of 10 organizers and we've serviced almost 800 homes over the past six years. And we actually just merged with a national company in May. So now we are part of a company based out of Utah. We're also in the Bay Area, um, Arizona and the DC area. So we, we have the privilege to, uh, to partner with Nathan to serve our clients, and we've done so over the past two years. That's great. 
what about uh so can you guys one of you maybe Nathan, tell me a little bit first where on a day-to-day basis do you get your business from in, in the junk removal space is it paid advertisement partnerships like just tell me a little bit about the channels and then i want to pivot to kind of asking a little bit about how this partnership started sure yeah so i think you know today about a third of our business comes from uh, repeat clients. Um, a third of our business comes from word of mouth. So neighbors, a realtor telling a realtor, um, a professional organizer, you know, such as Stephanie, having a conversation with their clients, encouraging them to use their services. And then the other third is, you know, paid advertising, whether it's, you know, Google or, um, you know, we, we, sponsor a lot of events we really try and stay active and engaged in our community with the clientele that we want to service so realtors property managers uh contractors you know we do a lot of uh breakfasts and you know lunch and learn opportunities and try and jump on those as much as we can um so that's kind of how our, our current customer acquisition is divided and then how did you guys link up what's the story here yeah yeah so stephanie and i i i think we kind of have different stories to be honest we've been working together for a while um but uh ultimately networking is how we met uh through you know a a mutual industry connection who you know linked us together and you know she or stephanie's business you know has grown a lot since you know we first met but uh she was very hands-on at at the time you know which was great you know for for me, because I was just kind of uh, getting started as well, and you know, getting to understand who our ideal clients even were, um, and Stephanie, you know, h- helped kind of mold you know the idea of of who we're searching for as a client, and you know, the types of folks that we want to service on a regular basis. So, and then uh, Stephanie, just so we're all like super clear, can you tell us a little bit more about? what a professional organizer does and how you work with your clients and then go into a little bit about how how you leverage relationships with service providers like a nathan here who runs the drunk truck for sure yeah so our services um we organize spaces meaning if you've seen the home edit or you've seen marie marie condo whatever it is i mean that's those are the things we do we go into your homes we pull all this stuff out and we help sort and edit, and then we come in and organize it, put that system in place. We put you know all the pieces in place to help really create that system. Um, we also do full service moves. So we help people and they're moving out. So we're helping them edit, get rid of things, get the home ready for the market. We partner with movers and then we move them into the, into the home. So Nathan's team will come in and various points throughout that process to help us. So there's a lot of things that we are helping to get out of the home. And so we, that's how we first started working together is um, identified that need in our business. We were offering more full service. And so we would bring Nathan's team in as an extension of our team to help, you know, get those items out of the home and um, to really deliver that, um, you know, full experience for the clients. So that's where we started working. And it's been, it's been several years now. And um, the relationship has continued to grow because it's really helped us. It's helped our business to grow too. So Nathan's played a big part in that. That's awesome. I, I think the ideal partnership here, it, you become successes with each other and you're an extension of each other. I, Nathan just posted something in the chat. Give them both a follow on Instagram. Uh, that'd be awesome. The Junk Trunk Co. And then Sakura Solutions. So I, I think we want to move on a little bit to talking about how, how do you build tr- strategic partnerships that are aligned with your business goals and values? So I'm going to focus the discussion here on three bullet points to give you an idea. So the first bullet point here is what we're calling selecting partners with complementary strengths. So I have a question for you, Stephanie. Uh, How do you qualify and look for partners like the junk trunk that complement your business? Sure. Well, you know, we serve a certain clientele um, at a higher price point. And so feeling confident with any vendor that we bring in that is, you know, essentially, you know, as a representation of us as well. So making sure that they're consistent with how our team is showing up professionalism, um, you know, being on time, being thoughtful of the, of the client's property is really important. 
um, it, to us. And so that was something we were looking for when we were looking for someone to, um, you know, to, to do the hauling for us. Um, and then someone also that aligns, what stood out to me about Nathan was, you know, they do a lot of, you know, cause our, our clients, they are like, oh, I feel bad getting rid of it. You know, I'm like, just get rid of it, you know, but, um, but Nathan's very thoughtful. And I think it's a good selling point where I'm like, they'll take it to donation. They'll take it to habitat. They'll take it for chemical recycling. They'll donate it, you know, to some place. They'll find a good home for it. And so that was something that was important to our clients. Um, so I think uh, finding a vendor that shares the same values and that you can feel very confident, like even if we're not on site, but our client calls Nathan or we scheduled to have Nathan come and his team, Nathan doesn't go out there, but his team does, um, that we feel, you know, we feel comfortable and confident that they're going to show up the same way our team does. So that was something we were looking for and we feel like we've got with Nathan and his team. That's great. Nathan, I don't know if there's anything you want to add to that uh, here, but feel sure. free to. Yeah, just quickly, you know, I think in the junk removal industry, oftentimes we're guilty of wanting to serve every single customer at, you know, every different price point because we want to say yes, yes, yes to every job. Um, you know, we think it's going to keep us busier in the slower months. Uh, you know, we we want to keep our team busy, et cetera, et cetera. But I think, you know, it's really important to ask yourself early on, you know, what kind of company do you want to be, you know, what kind of clientele do you want to work with on a regular basis? Do you want to service the higher end um, clientele? Do you want to work with professional organizers that are in, you know, two, three, four million dollar homes on a regular basis? Or do you want to work with, you know, a clientele whose expectations, you know, may not be, you know, at the same level? You know, do you want to service contractors more frequently? I think asking yourself those questions early on, you know, helps guide a lot of your decision making and in the partnerships that, um, you know, you, you will be introduced to and have the ability to forge, you know, down the line, but, you know, asking that question of, you know, who you really want to serve, um, you know, I think is really key in this stage. I certainly agree with that. I think the second bullet point here speaks to exactly what you said, which was identifying your ideal customer. Once you know who you're targeting, it, the partnerships are, are there for you to build. So understanding uh, you want to be working with professional organizers because they fit your same customer base you're looking with is key there. And it, when we talked yesterday in planning this webinar, that was very apparent to me here from hearing you guys in your relationship that you've built is you're working with the same customers. And uh, I, the professionalism piece is something you both touched on as well um, when you're dealing with junk removal companies. Uh, you want Nathan's company to be a, an extension of yours. So that is so important. And when we're talking about recommending uh, each other to your client base, can you tell me a little bit more, Stephanie, about like, what does this process look like when you say that the junk trunk is an extension of your team? Sure. You know, for most of our, I'd say majority of our clients, you know, we try to offer a full service experience. And so a lot of it we will own. Um, so, you know, we up front will, if we're looking ahead to a job and we know there's likely going to be some hauling that is, is needed, we'll go ahead and coordinate that um, for the client as much as we can. Um, sometimes we call Nathan same day, which is wonderful. They they come in, they come through for us when we weren't expecting um having such a big load to be hauled off. So we appreciate that. And then are there some times where they have to come after and that's where we really do this warm handoff, you know, and make it as easy as possible for the client, you know, like we've got it scheduled, they're going to come, whatever it is, or we give the information, but really, um, you know, it's a warm handoff. So the client feels very comfortable. They know that we trust them. And so, um, you know, that's something we've done for Nathan. And I feel also for myself when I'm, partnering with other vendors who I want them to do the same thing. Like if it's a moving company or if it's a real estate agent, um, really helping them to identify how can we help their business and what would be like, how would they introduce it to the client? So making it as easy as possible for them um, of how they might do that warm handoff. Like if you just let the client know this, or this is where we can help your business. This is where we can help your client. It makes it you know very easy. And Nathan did that for me is like letting me know exactly what they can do. And so that way I could communicate that with my client. So it's, taking some of that legwork out of it for us. But I think the warm handoff is, you know, is what the client trusts us. So if we give the one hand handoff, they're going to trust Nathan and his team. 
No, that's, that's great. And I really appreciate that. Uh, before we move on to the next slide here, um, anything else you want to add, Nathan, or should we just move on to the next one? Just real quick, you know, to expand on what I just said previously about, you know, identifying your ideal customer, something that goes along with that is, you know, in, in year one, two, and three, uh, my company really struggled with, you know, exactly what I was just describing, which is, you know, wanting to serve everyone. We wanted anyone and everyone to be our customer. We would say yes to every single job. Um, you know, we would bid low um, and, and, you know, we would overwhelm our, overwhelm our schedule on some days. Um, but what, you know, was the biggest factor for us that told us to, you know, stick to a certain clientele was ultimately, you know, the training of your team. You know, if, if you're having your team do, you know, the, the uh, really gross, nasty jobs, the contractor jobs, you know, that's, that's great. But then if you're also asking those same individuals to go, you know, service a professional organizer and be in those really high end situations, it's really hard to keep the, the quality control at a similar level throughout all those different lines of work. There's ways to do it. And, you know, we still do contractor work and, um, you know, we still do gr gross jobs. There's no doubt. But if, you know, the more you mix your schedule like that and try and, you know, say yes to every single customer, the more likelihood you may fall into, uh, you know, uh, you know, situations where your team isn't coming through in, in the way that the customer hopes because, you know, they just got done cleaning up, you know, something really nasty at a customer's house, uh, so on and so forth. But yeah, you know, it's, it's a constant dilemma in the industry, um, but, but worth thinking about. So if quick follow-up question, is that something when you're looking at uh, a potential job come in through either your website, wherever paid advertisement, is, is this something you're looking at uh, in evaluating whether or not to accept a job? Like, are, are you deciding if this is going to be kind of a gross job or is this going to be like a, what is that? Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah. Yeah. I think absolutely. I think the, you know, you have to, you know, if, if you don't, you know, you, I've been in so many situations, we still get into these situations, you know, where we, you know, said yes to a job, you know, we start a job and we're, you know, a quarter of the way through halfway through a job. And all of a sudden, you know, you're on day two of this long job. That's pretty nasty that you've, you know, given a, a estimate or, you know, a firm quote on, um, and throughout that whole day and a half when you've been working on the job, your phone's blowing up, right? You know, you're, you're getting more bookings that are higher profitable jobs um, and you're kicking yourself and, you know, trying to figure out how you can get out of that mess, right? That's, that's happened to us plenty of times. <laughs> um, so yeah, like it's, it's really tough. It's a really tough challenge because, you know, maybe you are slow, you know, so you want to fill up your schedule, what sounds like a, advantageous job. Um, but you know, you have to stay disciplined and, and the earlier that you start having that discipline, um, you know, the better off you'll be as your team grows. Cause, cause it's harder to, you know, maintain those standards, um, as you're, you know, finding people, you know, for dispatch, for operations, um, you know, leads on, on the truck and so on. Yeah. I would just to, to piggyback on that. I agree. Like, I feel like you learn that through your business, like the times when you're like, I should have said no to this and remember next time to say no to this and like, listen to that voice. And that, you know, I know it comes with time. Cause I agree, Nathan, like there's jobs, like there's so many jobs that we, you know, took in the, in the, you know, in the years past, we were like, you know, we shouldn't have taken this and you know, that kind of thing. And so just learning from that and like creating a process to help you identify who you're going to work with, what jobs you're going to take, and even pre-screening those. I mean, I think you do on your website, we do it on ours. Um, so that you're not also using the, you know, man or woman power to, to field those calls or something like that. So it's just to build a process from those learnings and, and stick with it. Cause every time I go against our process, I always am like kicking myself. Like whether it's, I change the contract or I do something and I'm like, listen to that voice in your head. So, yeah. Yeah. And, and, and maybe, you know, guys, it's, it's a customer who sends you a lot of work. And, you know, one out of every five or six of their jobs really suck, right? Like, so maybe, you know, for that, that client, you know, you have a little bit more leeway, right? Um, but if it's a, it, you know, a one-off job, you know, you, it's, it's a customer who 
it's it's a pretty unlikely that you'll get future work from you've you've um, decided you know those are the ones that I would stray away from versus you know maybe you've got a property manager a good customer sends you you know four or five jobs a month you know if 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 they if if one out of every five is nasty you know we're going to do that job you know every single time but you know it's the one off ones that we you know are are more likely to avoid and and ultimately turn down yeah looking at it through a bigger lens i would agree that you're like i i coach you know the our leaders across the country now and it's like looking through the lens of like if you take this job what is it more of a strategic move or is it just to get some cash flow like you know hopefully it's more strategic if you're taking the gross one to your point if it's continued relationship or something <laughs> That's why these type of partnerships are so important because they can help you qualify the types of jobs you're getting from the very beginning. Yeah, I send Nathan the Kush jobs, okay? So <laughs> hopefully, guys love your so. hopefully mine aren't the gross ones. I know we need more organizers. Right. <laughs> yeah, they're pretty easy. Yeah. All right. So I'm gonna move on to the next topic point, which is uh, how to sustain and retain your partnerships like this. So I would say the first thing here is you got to have complementary services and, and that goes back to understanding each other's business and standards. Um, I'm going to, while I'm talking here, put a poll out in, in the poll section. So when you have time, feel free to go check that out. But to talk about a little bit more about like researching and doing due diligence. So you have complementary services. The first thing here is you want to understand each other's businesses and standards. Uh, when we were talking yesterday uh, in, prepare, in preparation of this webinar, Stephanie, you kind of mentioned a little bit more, uh, we talked about it a little bit already, but the standards that you want Nathan's team to hold uh, for your customers. But when you're looking at vendors like the junk trunk, where you are recommending to your client base, can you tell us a little bit about some of the standards you look for in these type of vendors? Uh, the ones that show up same day for me are perfect. <laughs> like, um, you know, I think I, you know, a little before I touched on that, but, you know, really it's the professionalism, just feeling comfortable that they are, um, they're an extension of, of our business. And I think, feel like Nathan's really, he knows that. I think a lot of his team members know that now we've worked with them so much when they show up, they, they know um, kind of how we operate and, um, but that takes time. So I think it's having those conversations up front and seeing if it's a fit. And then, um, you know, it's, they've just built on that over, over the years. So, um, but I mean, that's just the biggest thing for me. I want my clients to feel comfortable when like this crew of five guys come in the house, um, and they're walking through the whole house. I want them to feel very comfortable with that. And they always do show up with such profess professionalism, introducing themselves, you know, going over the quote and just being very upfront. So I think that's, that's gone a long way with us and with our clients. That's great. And then the other thing here is when you're, when, when we're talking about how, how to sustain partnerships, one of the biggest things here is adapting to changes and evolving together. Nathan, I think you had some stuff uh, you mentioned on how Stephanie and her team have helped you grow over time. I don't know if you want to talk about that a little bit, but that would be great. Yeah. I, you know, it's, it's important to try and create these relationships with a, a mutual understanding that, you know, there, there may not be, you know, a perfect um, service, you know, our, our service isn't going to be exactly the way that Stephanie wants it every single time. Um, and the more that you are having open dialogue with a, a client, you know, beginning, middle, and next day, next week about, you know, how the experience went, uh, good, bad, and different, and things that can be improved upon, you know, that's that's all the the guidance you you guys need, you know, us us drunk removal companies need to then you know go train our team on, right? You know, and you know. It, maybe it's a assist process, you know, maybe we, we had, you know, mud on our shoes in a customer's house, um, you know, and, and, and I got, you know, a call from Stephanie about it. And uh, well, you know, that's, that's a pretty good indication that, you know, the next day, you know, the next week you're implementing a process to where, you know, 
booties are worn, you know, for every single job or, you know, shoes are taken off, whatever it, it may be. Um, but yeah, just that open, honest communication, you know, I think is, is key and, um, you know, having fun with it, you know, celebrating wins as, as Wes has here for, you know, for a bullet point is, you know, I think absolutely huge too, you know, to keep that positive energy towards the relationship. Can you talk a little bit about what you guys do together to share each other's successes? Sure. Yeah. I mean, we, you know, we go have a drink. We, uh, you know, we, we BS on the phone about customers who annoy us. Um, you know, we're, we talk about our market and, uh, you know, the other customers who we know about and, you know, gossip just like most friends do. Yeah. I always love Nathan's calls. Cause I'm like, Oh, this is going to be therapeutic. You know, we can always chat and, and we do get together and just give, you know, get together, grab dinner, give business updates. Um, I always love to share Nathan is so thoughtful and, you know, if he knows my teams in the area, he will stop by and bring them coffee and they really appreciate that. So that's always very thoughtful. And, um, you know, I wanted to add something, Wes, if I could about like the relationships, like Nathan yeah. and I were very fortunate that ours, like, as soon as we met, we were like, could fulfill like immediate needs in our businesses and it like took off and, you know, and then there's other partnerships. I feel like that just take time. You know, and you're really thinking about building relationships that sometimes it's your thing that really is building that relationship. It's building and it's building and um, versus just like a quick return. Like I met this person and they're going to use me instantly. And I know early in my business, I, you know, if you guys know you're just out there, you're just like pounding the pavement. You're like, nothing's happening. No one's calling. They said they would work with me. They're not calling, you know, and then, you know, then it, the time happens. Like, I think in our business, a lot of people are like, what do organizers do? Like, what do you do again? And then. It just, it's like staying, like continue to nurture that relationship, even if they're not sending you clients, but you think there's such potential um, that, you know, just continue to nurture those relationships. And like, it takes one client for them to be like, oh, now I know how to use you. And then this momentum starts. So it's like, I think it's, you know, just remember to be patient. Like Nathan and I, like I said, it took off like right away because we had an immediate need and Nathan's team was able to fulfill that. Um, but that, you know, if there are industries that, you know, that are good partners for you to kind of just keep at it, like stay on their radar, you know, follow them on Instagram um, and just figure out how you can bridge that gap to become an asset to them and their business. Um, but it just sometimes takes a while to, you know, everyone's busy and they're in their own space. And so it just sometimes it takes a while for that, like to click and they're like, this is how I can use them. Um, and then it just can take off from there, but it's just really being patient versus just hoping for a quick return. Yeah, just just real quick to piggyback off that, the, the nurturing process with the customer, like, you know, how do you turn that into, you know, a, a system or a process? Like, I think is a question that, you know, every business owner needs to ask themselves and the sooner they ask themselves that, you know, the, the quicker they'll start seeing business, but it's, it's connecting on LinkedIn, it's following them on Instagram, it's uh, it's it's liking in in engaging with them on social media. Um, it's saying hello to them when you see them at events. You know the the biggest thing that we're you know and, and and this is all for the customers that aren't actually using you. You know if if you are you know kicking pavement and you know just getting ticked off because you know one or two customers that you've really been trying to earn their business you know aren't using you. You know you're you're not going to get very far. The the name of the game is is you know this is a a numbers game you know we've got such a, a wide variety of potential customers if you you know get stuck on two or three people that you really want to work with you know you're not going to grow as quickly as you can versus if you're you know having these these soft um soft touches with you know a wide variety of people you know that's when you'll really see your your uh sales process work yeah and I will comment, like Nathan does such a good job. Like every time on social media, like I see agents and organizers and designers, whatever, like Nathan's already liked the post and like he is on it, like very much so. And then whenever there's an event, I feel like in a related industry, like Nathan's sponsoring it, like he just has a presence. So he does a really good job of that, um, of just, you know, getting himself out there and just staying top of mind for people so that when the need arises, that they already have that, you know, they already know who you are, they trust you and they're willing, and then they're going to call you, but it just takes a while sometimes. I mean, that's how you really become kind of one of those pillars of the community. I feel like is in, which is so important for 
home service based businesses. Uh, there, yeah. there is a philosophy that I look at in the partnership world, kind of what you're talking about, Stephanie is, uh, I don't think you should ever expect something to just like explode at the very beginning. Sometimes it does, but there's a philosophy in the partnerships world. I like to look at that's called the crawl walk run philosophy. So when you're launching a partnership, uh, you kind of take it slow at the beginning, you crawl your way through the first win or so. And then once that starts and gets some success, then you're walking together. And once that keeps taking off, then you're sprinting and running. Uh, mm -hmm. So yeah, right. as we talk, of, yeah. And as we talk about that a little bit, I think it's a nice segue to our last topic, which is how to maximize and get success out of partnerships. So this is going to be a shorter slide, uh, but we're going to kind of talk about how you guys expand a little bit together. And so when we're looking at market reach and customer base uh, through some of your efforts on collaboration, I, I think this is more of a question for both of you guys, uh, but there's a story about how Stephanie, you were in uh, one of the magazines in Colorado, like the 5280 magazine. And I, I guess, can one of you guys talk a, a little bit about that experience and then how you both leveraged your customer base to do some marketing together? Sure. Um, well, it, it wasn't very strategic. I just happened, I was being interviewed for 5280, which is a big magazine here in Colorado. and which was like a big goal of mine. And I finally accomplished it. They reached out, which was really nice. Um, and um, they were just talking about our services and what we do. And I just mentioned like one of the big things we do is like we complete a project fully. Like we don't leave the pile of donations or trash for the client to deal with. Like we're a full service. And so I mentioned, you know, that we leverage Nathan's team as part of that. And they were um, they actually featured it and they like tagged Nathan and they linked to his website and I didn't even really think much about it. And you must be like crawling the internet, Nathan, because you knew before I even saw the article, you're like, Hey, you mentioned us. And, um, he was really like kind, his team was really kind. And they did like a big email blast out to their, um, you know, to their client base and their followers, um, you know, sharing that. So then it, in turn, it like, you know, highlighted our business as well. So that was, that was really thoughtful, but, um, yeah. I'm glad, I'm glad that happened. I didn't even plan for it. And I was just happy to do it for Nathan. So. Yeah. Yeah. Like I think, you know, the idea is we're in so many people's homes and, and businesses throughout the course of a day, week, month, year, and every home that we go into just about every single home, you know, they have a, another home service need. So, you know, it's, it's asking yourselves, okay, what, what painter do I know in the community? What professional organizer, what HVAC plumber, whatever it might be, you know, if, if I give them a boost, you know, that that's a way to build and nurture a relationship. You know, maybe you give them a, a shout out on social media, you know, maybe you, you have a really strong relationship with them and you, you know, want to feature them in an email to your customer base. Um, but yeah, like we sent out that email to our entire customer database, you know, and I think, you know, we got like four or five jobs, you know, and, in you know, booked just from that email. And I think um, Stephanie had an interaction too from it or someone, you know, yeah. uh, noted it to her and, and Stephanie was kept top of mind for, for someone in the community too. So, I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's those uh, small touches. Yeah. And I think like looking through the lens, like as you're thinking to build partnerships and stuff is, you know, on, you know, we all run, we're all running our businesses, we want to grow our business. But when you look at the partnerships, like how can I support their business? How can I help them grow? Um, you know, and I think it's just, a, is a way to look at it. It's like, how can I help them? And I think that then the vendor really trusts you. And then it just, it comes around, you know? And, um, and I think with, like Nathan was saying, like we're in clients' homes, we say we're like a cross between like a hairdresser and a bartender because we're in their homes and they like, people just start telling you everything. And they, they ask you if you know someone to do this and this and this, you know? So we love to have those resources um to be able to because you want you want to be able to like help the client anyway and then in turn it helps like the vendors that you know so it's just nice to have you know that list of people you trust that if they're like same thing like Nathan said well I'm gonna now this room looks so great I want to paint it do you know a painter do you, I mean we get like all the requests like do you can you look at what's on my back do you know someone <laughs> like um we get it all so it's we're happy to you know have that list it feels good to be like oh my god I have someone let me connect you so 
um, you know, having that list adds value to your client. It, you know, it's um, they see you as a greater value as well. Yeah, like like we have a, a, a sales rep and, her, you know, a huge part of her job is literally just introducing herself to other home service providers, knowing that, you know, forging that relationship, it, you know, we're going to benefit one because we can provide our customer base with uh, more individuals who can help them, you know, when our team gets asked. Um, and two, you know, it's it's more than likely going to come back around. Um, so, yeah. Is that very common with junk removal companies to have someone be doing that? I think, you know, it, it depends on the size of the company. Um, but, you know, I think a lot of times it's the owner, you know, it, it, I was, I've been the one doing that for, you know, six plus years, you know, and we finally yeah. got someone now who's, you know, that's, it's, it's, it's committed to doing it full time. No, oh, that's great. Uh, and then, when you're looking at new markets, I think you mentioned earlier, you just opened a Nashville location. Uh, can you talk a little bit about how you guys work together, maybe leverage each other as you launch the drunk trunk in Nashville? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, the best people, you know, to re reach out to whenever you're, you're, experiencing any sort of business growth, whether it's in a new market or maybe you're, um, you know, expanding more locally or wanting to get into a different service offering is, is to go ask, you know, your, your network, your, you know, board of advisors. Right. And, and Stephanie's one of the first person, one of the first people that I went to, you know, I, I know Stephanie's got a, a wide, um, a wide social media following, um, you know, her work's been featured in a lot of different places the professional organizing community is relatively tight knit. Um, so she right away, you know, had a handful of, uh, warm introductions she could make for me on the ground in Nashville. And, you know, those are folks who, um, you know, have, have, have slowly become our, our customer base, you know, in, in a brand new market. So yeah, leveraging those relationships, you know, it's, it's as simple as, um, asking people for help. People want to give help, you know, people, people like giving advice and, uh, uh, feeling like they are um, contributing positively to to someone else's um, growth, you know. I think in in any element of of life, you know, or business, and um, you know, Stephanie came through there for us, making some warm interests. That's awesome. Uh, we have a few more minutes here, so I I think if there's anything else you guys want to cover before we move on, now is the time. If if not, I will just move on cool so first of all I, I really appreciate and we're gonna go into questions if anyone has any I haven't seen any come through but now's the time to start asking questions if you have them uh, but first of all thank you both for giving your insights on partnerships today uh, I just in general I think we heard a bunch of really positive things. And I would say the main theme is you got to build a partnership that you can trust each other and grow together with. Uh, so I, I think if there's any other closing words that you guys want to give before we jump into questions, now is the time. Um, if not, we'll just jump into questions. Nathan, Stephanie, right, is that anything? One more piece of yeah. I'll just one more piece of information. Um, I'm looking at my notes here. Like I, I have notes where I, um, like I said, we have you know, our, our organizers across the country that I help with building vendor par partnerships. And so, you know, I help them understand, or when you're talking to potential potential vendor, like if I'm talking to Nathan, you know, I want to help him make it as easy as possible to refer us. So I'm like, if you hear a client say X, like this would be a great time to insert our name. Like if you hear a client say well, now what am I, you know, all this stuff's cleared out. Now, how am I going to put the space back together? Or like, what are the words you're going to hear? That would be a good time to slide our name in. And it might seem so basic or, you know, but I, I know I was talking with the mover. We partner a lot with movers and we pull Nathan into those projects as well. But it was like, he, he's like, oh, I never thought of like referring you. I was like, I don't, how could you not, you know, but it really, I have to realize like everyone's in their own world running their own business. So if you make it as easy as possible. So I literally have like, if a client says X, that would be a great time to mention our name if they say X. And so I think um, that was something that was a learning for me and really helpful um, to make it as easy as possible for, 
for vendor partners, like to see how they can use you or how they can refer you or when would be a good time to, you know, to make that warm handoff. If that makes sense. Does that make Definitely. sense? That's, what I'm saying? that's, that's very good advice. Um, I see this in the partnership world here at Workies with the, some of our partners. Uh, a, getting our partners to keep us top of mind is very important, but making it easy for them is even more important because yeah, I, I don't think anyone expects a partner to like sell each other's services, but making the introductions and keeping them top of mind and making it easy as possible is really like, it is the best way to do this in my opinion. So it definitely makes sense to me. Okay. Um, okay. Anything else? All good. Awesome. Okay. So I'm going to jump into our q and I see we just had something come in from Rudolph Brown, and this one looks like it's for Nathan here uh, from Stuff Haulers in DC. How, how did you assemble the initial team to do jobs in Nashville as you were getting started? And maybe you didn't have as many jobs to keep your crew busy full time. So I, if you can talk on that a little bit. Yeah, I mean, you know, there's a lot of different ways to do it. Um, you know, we weren't in a massive rush, which is, I think, really important. Um, so we were able to find people, find good people, and really clearly communicate expectations to them about what, you know, those first couple weeks or, you know, month or so might look like. Um, and then, you know, we trained, we trained like crazy. So we brought people out to, to Denver, um, where, you know, we've got, you know, a, a, a seven truck operation, you know, we've got, you know, some, some really good established systems and processes and tried to really, um, assimilate them into, uh, that routine so that, you know, once, once they got back out to Nashville, it was, it was second nature, um, uh, to, you know, to stay busy initially, um, you know, we really tapped into, uh, people who we know need our services uh, through cold calling, you know, DMing, um, cold emails, and tried to start forging those partnerships. And, you know, our, our initial marketing there was, um, you know, let us do a job for you, you know, let us do a quarter truckload or less. Um, so it's essentially, you know, a, a customer acquisition cost, you know, we're not doing anything anyways, let's go forge, you know, a relationship um and you know hopefully they you know they use us a month down the road hopefully they leave us a review right um so we did a lot of that you know you know for the first uh, couple weeks you know in in month or so um yeah yeah i hope that answers your question that's great uh we had another question come in from nikki here uh what is the best verbiage to use when offering your services to a potential partner through a cold call? Um, I think it, de you know, it depends, you know, I, I always like to do as much research on, on the person, you know, as I can and first see if there's any potential for a, uh, you know, even if it's a lukewarm, uh, introduction, right? Maybe you have a LinkedIn connection. Maybe you have a mutual follow on Instagram. Um, you know, I would always try and explore that first. Maybe, you know, maybe it's a mutual friend on Facebook even. Um, and, you know, verbiage wise, um, it, yeah, like I, I tailor it to the specific person. Something that we've had a lot of success with actually is, um, like, like we'll take like a, like a 20, 30 second, um, Instagram video and we'll DM it to people, um, you know, and, and make it super personal. Hi, you know, this is Nathan with the drunk trunk. Um, you know, I noticed this, this and this about you. Uh, you know, we just opened up in Nashville. Um, you know, would love to, uh, you know, meet for a coffee. Would love to, um, introduce ourselves. If you need any help, you know, here's, um, you know, a discount code for you. You know, we'll give you, you know, this, this, and this for free, blah, blah, blah. Um, but yeah, just get really ultra personal. Um, it's worth taking the extra time, um, to, uh, make it that way. I think. Yeah. Yeah. I would agree. Like, I think, um, I don't do much pull contact, I guess you call them, but I try to, you know, connect with them on Instagram a little bit, you know, that kind of thing. So there, and then find some point of connection 
that, you know, but again, it's like, you're kind of like leading up to like the DM or whatever it is so that they kind of know they've get it. Like they've seen you before or something like that. If it's just like on social media or something like that. And then I love like a point of connection. Like I'm such a connector. I was like, there's gotta be something I know about this person or someone who knows them. And so whether they can do that, that warm, you know, three-way text or whatever it is, or you can comment about that or, cause we all get those in our DMs where it's just like, Hey, bleh, and they just like throw it and you're like, delete, you know what I mean? Cause you know, it's just like, uh, you know, they're just copy and pasting there. So, and I agree with Nathan also, like I'll do that sometimes is I'll send a little video message. Um, that's very personal. I think it takes less time than actually typing it. Um, and it just, they might actually like watch it. So, um, yeah, I think try to make it as warm as possible. Yeah, and and to just expand about expand on that a little bit, we have virtual assistants. We have three virtual assistants who help us with um, like a lot of this like cold interaction stuff. Um, that's in it's it's something that's only like two months old for us, um, but it's been really really beneficial. We've got you know three people in the Philippines who work for us full time who you know. Are, are pretty much committed to, you know, doing all sorts of outreach and customer acquisition through chat, you know, chat GPT um, and all the different stuff. So I would strongly look into that. It's very inexpensive and it's, uh, it's, it's been awesome for us. That's great. Awesome. Any, any other questions here before we kind of shut this down? Okay, I don't think so. Well, first of all, uh, Nathan, Stephanie, super appreciate the time today. It, it's been a great chat, uh, and it's been great to hear your guys' take on partnerships and how you guys have grown together. Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining. Uh, but, yeah, I, I really appreciate the time today. Yeah, this is fun. Thank you so much. And I have one Thanks, question for Wes. Nathan. Okay. Nathan, did you find the best milkshake in Denver? I know you're on the quest for the best milkshake. Did you, what was the verdict? I, I think Sweet Cooey's is, is the best. That's, that's right, my favorite. So you heard it. I don't know if you, you got one out here. there. And, you heard and, it here. <laughs> you know, I, I do follow, I, I do follow Nathan on social media. We're, we're friends from back in college and I, I, I he is the go-to for milkshakes. So I gotta say. He's trying like every milkshake in Colorado. Yeah. <laughs> I loved watching that. So awesome. Thank you so much. Awesome. And so for all those of you guys in the chat, this is going to be record. This has been recorded. And if you want to rewatch it, uh, it, it's just go back to the link you registered with and it will be live there forever. So again, thank you all. I'm going to shut this down now, but um, until next time. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Thank Wes. Thanks, Stephanie. All right. Oh, we Thanks. got a little milkshake rec recommendation here. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Good stuff, Peter. All right. Thank you.